Take note, because it is important. Many do not know that the way out of suffering is to go through the door of repentance. Many do not know that the way out of suffering is to go through the door of repentance. Which means, to stop suffering, you need to repent. Perhaps you have asked yourself, for a while now, when will life give me a truce? When? Because I've only been facing defeat after defeat. I have only been paying a high price. Diseases, pains, lack of peace, losses, problems, family conflicts, stressful and destroyed relationships, enemies all around me. Why is my life so troubled? Maybe you have asked yourself, but you must remember, as I just mentioned, the way out of suffering is to go through the door of repentance. And it is not difficult to understand this, because when we look at human history, we know that suffering entered human beings through the door of sin. Up until sin, the human being lived literally in paradise. There was no disease, pain, arguments, contempt, robbery, murdering. There was abundance of everything that was good. It was the paradise, it was God's plan for the human being. But because of sin, in disobedience, came the suffering. Problems started to destroy human life and lead humans to suffer. So many today hide in them a hidden or wide open sin. The problem with the hidden sin is worse than with the wide open one, because the wide open one, everybody knows it, and the person can hide. So it's easier for them to recognize their sin, their problem. The worst problem is the hidden sin, is the one that nobody sees, that nobody knows it, and the person harbors that within and on the outside, they act like saints. Am I right? Acting like saints on the outside, keeping a sin within. They can be deceiving everyone but three people, themselves, God and the devil. And when we say that suffering entered through the door of sin, it's not that God punishes. People think that God punishes humans for sins. No, God doesn't need to punish humans for sins. Sins bring consequences to the sinner. And we cannot forget, when we sin, we generate a debt with death, a debt with the devil, with the accuser. The wages of sin are death, which means you sin, you generate a debt, because sin owns you, the devil owns you now, because you obeyed. What is sin? Disobedience to God and obedience to the devil. We are servants of those we obey. Please pay attention, follow my thinking. We are servants of those we obey. The scriptures say this. So when you obey God, you are under his protection. The devil cannot touch you. Death cannot touch you. But when you disobey God, you automatically obey the devil. There's no neutrality in the spiritual realm. 
It is impossible to disobey God and not to obey the devil. It's impossible. So when someone disobeys God, they automatically are obeying the devil, which means they leave God's authority and go under the devil's authority. Soon, he has free access to touch, to destroy the person's life. And here is when suffering comes. Suffering comes through the door of sin. Many people are sick today. Many are undergoing treatments with doctors, all types of therapies, medication, and even praying to God for healing. But healing cannot come before forgiveness. It cannot come before forgiveness. Jesus frequently before healing people, he would forgive them, was the case of that paralytic once brought in a bed where Jesus was, when he was placed before Jesus, Jesus said, son, your sins are forgiven. First, he forgave the sins of the paralytic, and later he said, take your bed and walk and go home. So the healing came after the forgiveness of sins. So many are not healed going through real battles with very expensive treatments and they don't get rid of their sickness because there's a hidden sin they didn't confess, they didn't repent, they practiced that sin consciously but they are hiding it within, they hide that sin because they think I can't say this to anyone. My reputation will go down there. I will lose my job. I will lose my position, my reputation, my good name. So the person prefers to hide and to keep the sin and to lose peace, to lose their own soul, their own salvation, than to lose their reputation. In other words, their reputation became their God. Because if God was God to them, for real, they would have the fear of losing their soul instead of losing their reputation. Are you understanding, dear friends? Pay attention. I'm not here to put a heavier burden upon you who are living in sin already. No, I'm trying to remove this heavy burden you are carrying. You are carrying a heavy burden that does not allow you to sleep. You might have panic attacks, anxiety. You live like a frightened child in the dark. You live like a frightened child for no reason. You are scared. You live with your feelings just under your skin. Why? Because this hidden sin within you brings you fear. It takes your peace away. You have no peace with God and with yourself. You live in terror, afraid of being caught. Or maybe you think there's no chance of somebody finding out. But as King David said, as I covered up my sins, while I covered up my sins, my bones rotted. You are rottening within, as if you were rotten, because this sin corrodes you. So I'm not saying to make your situation even worse or for you to feel even heavier. No, I'm saying there is a way out, there's an exit door for this suffering. The exit door is called repentance, because without repentance there's no forgiveness for sins, so you must repent which involves recognizing the mistake you made, to stop justifying yourself, defending yourself. No, I've done this because so and so pushed me to do it, they coerced me to do that. Stop justifying sin. There's no justification for sin. You must recognize the sin. You must confess the sin to those entitled. When I say those entitled, because there are sins we commit within us, 
He didn't involve anyone. He didn't harm anyone. Is a sin. We must confess to God, change, and that's it. It's over. There's no confession to others. There's only confession to God because it didn't involve anyone. But there are sins that involve others and it still affects them. They must come clean and ripped off from you through confession. And if you are in doubt, if you should confess it or not, so look for the guidance of a man of God, a person of God, who you truly respect, that you know them, who is a person of God, who will tell you the truth and not to please you, and make it clear if it's not already of what you should do. But you must seek confession to those entitled to, if possible, repair the damage, to return what you stole, ask for forgiveness, change to leave the mistake if it's still being committed, at times there's nothing to be repaired, only the request for forgiveness and the change of conduct. A true repentance involves change of conduct. Never ask for forgiveness if you don't intend to change, because that would just make the situation even worse. So if you go through this door of repentance, that I understand, that is narrow, tight, but if you go through it, on the other side, there's peace, deliverance, healing, health, complete freedom in the spirit and in the flesh. But if you stay in this prison called sin, unfortunately, you will rot there. And in the end of all, you will lose your soul. And that's not what God wants. That's why He stretches out the opportunity of forgiveness through repentance. If today's video helped you and you know someone that could benefit from it, share it with them. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, you may do so now. See you later.